Hi everybody, I'm Barbara Dodona. I'm the Director of Training and Communication here at the Moore Center. And lately, we know we've been seeing a lot on the news um, that can be disturbing, um, maybe bringing up a lot of emotions for many of us, um, including perhaps the people that you are providing support for. So I am joined by Brian and Diane. They're two of our Moore Center staff who are mental health professionals. And we're just gonna ask them for some tips around um, our own self-care and also helping the people that we support during kind of tumultuous times that we're seeing right now. So Brian, I'm gonna turn it over to you and just ask you for some tips on this. Anything you could suggest? I think, as you said, Barbara, I think a lot of us are trying to make sense of this and, and dealing with our, our thoughts and our feelings around it. You know, it, I don't know if it, if it matters which side of the aisle we're coming down or what, or what our politics are, but we're all sort of trying to make sense of it. And I think the first tip I would say is, is be checking in with yourself and kind of noticing what you're feeling and how you're doing. And if you've made sense of it yourself or where you are in that process before you have a conversation with someone, um, with one of our, our clients that may be struggling with this. But I think having that conversation once you've sort of figured out where you are can be really important. I would say uh, one of my ideas and thoughts is that um, having individual conversations first is really helpful. I know there's oftentimes a thought of, of forums and forums can be really helpful and really valuable to allow a community to express themselves. But I think we are seeing that there's a lot of different not only opinions about this situation, but also different understanding levels of what happened, especially because the, the, I think sometimes the storyline is different than the images and people might be reacting emotionally and, and to the intensity of some of the images we've seen. Um, and maybe that gets disconnected from the, you know, from the other parts of it. So having conversations with people one-on-one -on -one at first at least can sometimes be helpful because um, if we had group, group conversations, sometimes people might be coming from different places and it could create a lot of energy and actually end up sort of frustrating the whole situation. Um, I think also the thing we have to know is like, we don't have to get it right the first time when we're having these conversations. You know, the truth is for a lot of people, it's not something that they're thinking about and then moving away from. It might be something that's going on for them for a period of time. So having multiple conversations and having opportunities to keep exploring that with them is, is, is helpful. So we don't have to get it perfect. We don't have to be perfect, but we can keep checking in and, and talking. Um, and I also think it would be imp it's important for us to think about the people that might, either because of how they're presenting, we know that they're struggling with it, or people that we have an idea of, have a hard time with the news or have a hard time with big situations that are out of their control and, and maybe even being proactive in those conversations. If they're not saying anything, checking in with them and, and trying to see how they're feeling. Diane, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I think from my point of view, the first thing to do is just to acknowledge what um, you're feeling and what the people you work with are feeling. And that can be a whole range of things. And it, and it's not always just one feeling. It can be anger. It can be sadness. It can be confusion. And oftentimes helplessness because there's this stuff going on out in the world and we don't really have a lot of control over it. But, but we have this sense that it's going to impact our lives. Um, so that can be scary too. So fear and anxiety can be part of that. So I think that an important first step if you're having a conversation with somebody is to really try to understand what they're feeling and reflect to them that you understand that what they're feeling. It sounds like you're feeling really confused. It sounds like this is kind of getting you angry. And the, the interesting part about that is that if I'm with somebody, I may be feeling upset, they may be feeling upset, but we may be feeling upset from the different perspectives it's not my perspective that's so important is the fact that I can understand that they're upset by this. Um, and then I think um, once we've done that, once we've acknowledged the feelings and um, if necessary, talk about what the details are that are upsetting them, maybe, you know, I feel like that we may think that they're upset because of what's going on in a part of our world. It might just be that they're upset because this news bulletin 
interrupted their favorite television show. So it's, it, I think it's important to not make presumptions about what has caused an emotion, but to check in on that. And then I think the most important part after that is to focus on positive solutions and especially on positive solutions that empower somebody. So what are the things that they do when they're in conflict with somebody who's actually in the room with them? So if they feel conflict with somebody on the television, they may not be able to use those exact tools, but if we can sort out what's causing that, those feelings and then sort out what are the things that help that, that person feel better when they're upset in other circumstances and then try to build on those positive things. Give people, you know, I know that we have some folks that we work with who are very committed to their routine, for example. Um, and so if their routine includes watching the news, just saying, oh, let's turn off the news is probably not a great solution, but we could give them a choice. Would you like to turn off the news and watch some television later? Or would you like to watch the news and then do something that really makes you feel better? Um, that's just an immediate, but to give people some choices to return that sense of empowerment um, is, is often a, a, a helpful option. What else, Barbara, did you, were you hoping we'd talk to? Too. I think that those are great tips, and I think that um, I just want to thank both of you for taking a few minutes to chat with us. Um, and I would just include, um, you know, reiterate what Brian said, which is to, to check in with yourself. Um, we all want to be in the best possible place so that we can provide these types of supports for, for people who are counting on us in our lives. Um, and Diane, did you have some closing thoughts? I just wanted to add one more thing, which is a lot of what people are feeling right now is disconnected. And so finding an activity that helps not just the client, but yourself to um, feel connected. And it can be as simple as playing a card game or um, doing a side-by-side -side craft activity. Something that, again, gives positive energy and um, connects two people to each other in a positive way because so much of what people are feeling right now is isolated and disconnected. Yeah, such a good point, so important. Um, well, thank you both and be on the lookout for more um, tips and please just remember if you really are struggling or someone in your life is struggling, please make sure that you are reaching out to someone. Thank you.